one year after. <sighs> it's been almost a year since I found out my ex was cheating on me with multiple people. Also, this month would have been our six-year anniversary as a couple not married. I thought I had moved on and that I had found peace with everything that happened. In my mind, I'd even forgiven them for what happened. Truth is, there hasn't been a single day for a year that I don't think of them or check their socials. Maybe it's because it's been a year now, but my mind has been racing a lot more recently, and my anxiety has kept me running through everything over and over. I'm just so tired of it. I desperately want to move on, but I'm stuck in this loop. I'm young, I have my whole life ahead of me, but the betrayal has kept me from forming meaningful relationships with anyone else. I don't have friends. The few friends I do have live far away and don't even know about everything that happened. Nobody knows, and it makes me sick. How can I put this behind? It feels trivial to seek therapy for this, but maybe it's the only way. What do you even say to a therapist about this? Will they just tell me things I already know deep inside? Like, you need to move on, focus on your career, etc. They say time heals all wounds, but it's been a year and I still feel less itty about it. How long does it take to get completely over something like this? Is something wrong with me for being unable to put it past me? Story 2. I want to know every detail. Is that too much to ask? I 40 meters finally discovered proof of my partner's 34F cheating over three years ago. I had long suspected that it had happened, but I had no proof. I have all the information, the timeline, a location, and the full name of the other person. She had used my computer and left her email open. Since we have had issues, in particular with a male co-worker with whom she snapchatted with for a couple of months and concealed it from me, while deleting his text messages to her as well, my curiosity got the best of me. I noticed a recent correspondence with a man from her hometown. Something told me that this was the guy that I had been looking for. Over the last two months, she's been talking with the guy, and from that info I discovered his name, his location, and when it happened, she was on a trip home to visit her sister who was apparently having a family crisis and needed her help, and one night went to a casino to meet up with old friends. That's all that I knew, since we share each other's location at her request, because she often would accuse me of cheating. I watched her disappear into the hotel portion of the casino and turn her phone off for the night. I went nuts. I had absolutely no idea what was happening. If she was there willingly, if she was okay, I knew nothing. The hotel had no check-in under her name. The next day she brushed it off and told me she spent the night with her gay friend in the hotel room, a room with two queen beds, because they had had too much to drink. She gave me the name of the friend, and I quickly followed up by asking the hotel if that person had checked in. He did not. Since then I've suspected that she spent the night with somebody else, somebody who I did not know about. From their emails, I was able to find his full name, his phone number, his address, everything I needed to know to be able to ask the hotel as this other guy, about the last time that I stayed there, and the kind of room that I had, as I would like to book the same kind of room again. They confirmed what I had feared. He had checked in on the night she was there. King room, one king bed, one unnamed guest in addition to him. I was devastated. After reading through their correspondence, I found out that he was one of her casual less time partners over the years. He had always wanted more, but had accepted that she did not want that. So last night, I told her everything that I knew. She did need nothing, but promised that there was no desire to be with him anymore. And all of the intrusive thoughts are eating me alive as we speak. And they have been over the last month since I've known. Since D-Day, I have a history of childhood as time wool abuse, and it has profoundly impacted my ability to trust and to make love now as an adult. We have struggled with S time for a long time, and I feel that I am just a below average lover and that she needs more than I can provide. We have tried and failed to make love more times than we have made love. I do consider myself to be on the A spectrum, Demi's time ool. I did feel comfortable and safe enough to begin a relationship with and make love with her. Over time, that feeling of safety and ability to be vulnerable has degraded. I want to reconcile. I believe that she does, too. I've even stated that I understand why it happened and that it was my fault with all of the S time ool issues that I have. It's been years since the incident and so much has changed since then. We bought a home together. We have two dogs. We've even talked about IVF treatment to have kids one day. Since I cannot naturally get her pregnant, we are going to talk tonight. I want to know everything. I want to know how it happened, where it happened, how many times, and every other detail about that night that I was never supposed to know.
My question is, is this too much to ask? I honestly feel that knowing every detail will put all my intrusive thoughts to bed, as I will no longer have to imagine what had happened, and it may be better or worse in comparison to what I imagined, but it's what I need to be able to move forward from here with confidence that our reconciliation will be successful. I just want to know in my heart that I am worthy to her, worthy of her honesty, worthy of the truth. Even if it's a hard truth, Redditor's reactions update after. Redditor 1, Emo, there isn't one good reason to cheat not one. She has a voice. She should have used it. You want to give her a free pass that's on you. I'm sure we will hear from you in the near future. Redditor follow up. This doesn't feel like a fair or supportive response to a vulnerable post with a specific question. Op, knowing the details will be painful, but that's what many people need to move forward. Is she remorseful and taking full accountability? Because that is generally the only path to reconciliation. Redditor 2, it's called pain shopping. But enjoy. Redditor 3. Having all the details is not too much to ask. It does help fill in the gaps and will help keep your mind from filling in the blanks. Remember though, once you hear something, you can't unhear it. Try downloading a copy of Joseph's letter from the internet. It may help her to understand better why you need to know the details. Good luck op. Op answer. Thank you so much. I just read it. It almost perfectly captures exactly what I want to say and exactly how I feel. Update should I contact AP? My 40M girlfriend 34F and I are in the beginning of considering reconciliation, after my recent discovery of an affair that occurred 3-1-2 years ago. We have been together nearly six years. As for the affair, my girlfriend took a trip to her hometown to see her sister, and slept with an old FWB from the past. It was what I thought was a one-night stand, but after talking to AP's ex I informed her of the affair, as they were living together at the time. According to her, it turned out they slept together on two separate occasions during that trip. She was able to talk with her ex, my girlfriend's AP, and then share the info she got from him with me. I had long suspected that it happened, but didn't have proof until my girlfriend began conversing with AP again early this year. I had watched their correspondence unfold on my own computer as she stayed logged into her email, and I noticed these messages coming in frequently, on a daily basis, multiple times a day. I finally confronted her about a month ago with the evidence and knowing the timeline and who the AP was after doing some digging myself. After some hysterical bonding, we are trying to work through this and stay together. Every day is a whirlwind of emotions. Anger, sadness, anxiety, self-loathing are things that I grapple with while I just try to keep my head up and get through my work days. We talk about it when I need to. I tell her when something triggers me, she has been emotionally available and open to discussion, and that has been a big help. She acknowledges the need for counseling, although we have yet to schedule a session. Reconciliation seems to be what we both want, and we are working toward it, though very slowly. I have a grueling work schedule that doesn't allow me much time during the week to have meaningful conversations with her. My current dilemma involves an additional possible AP. It was a co-worker of hers. It was another situation in which I long suspected something was going on, but in which I had very little proof. I don't know if it was an EA a PA, or just S-zing or flirting. I do know that she Snapchatted quite a bit with him while I was at work, and then discontinued and deleted the app once I found out about it. She stated it was nothing. I was never able to see any of the Snapchats between them. After that, my curiosity grew, and my ability to snoop grew with it. I noticed that Google Hangouts was a frequently used app on her phone when I would snoop, although there were never any messages in there to see. Also, they resorted to texting each other infrequently, and she deleted all of his text messages to her so that I wouldn't see them. Trouble is, I did see them in her trash before she deleted them completely. She also went on a girl's trip to Dallas last year, and he texted her that morning with how's it going? Since I had long suspected something was going on, I saw this message before she deleted it, while she was in the shower getting ready to leave. Upon returning from her trip, the entire message thread was gone. I do know that this guy had recently moved to within an hour of where she was staying for her trip. He's a National Guard reservist and was stationed there. He returned to our hometown at the beginning of this year, and they resumed working together. The last recent message from him read you free after work? This was the day before I confronted her about AP1, the secrecy regarding their messaging, the deleting of texts, and the lengths she went to in order to conceal this from me is why I believe it was an affair. Although I don't believe she has been communicating with him or has met up with him this year, 
I'm almost certain that she was having an affair with him before he was stationed elsewhere. I have this guy's phone number now. I've written him a long text message which I have not yet sent. But I'm working up the courage to just call him, calm and without all the emotions I am feeling, to ask him what his relationship with my girlfriend entailed. I figure I can tell him that I recently found out she had an affair, and from their communication, it looks like they were having an affair together as well. I'm a reasonable person. I've been good to my girlfriend. I've been loyal. Through our ups and downs, we have stuck together for six years now. I want him to know that I do love her and I do want to reconcile, but that I need to know the truth of what happened between them because I know that I cannot trust what my girlfriend tells me right now. I won't be able to for a long time. She lied to me for years about the affair and only came clean when I found solid evidence of it. He is the only one that I feel will be able to tell me the truth. Has anyone here successfully talked with an AP to find the whole truth of the situation? Any advice for a first-timer trying to get to the bottom of a possible affair by communicating with the AP? Edit. Change to considering reconciliation for everyone that is stuck on having me define reconciliation properly. Update. As stated, I am seeking advice from those who have successfully contacted APs in seeking information about affairs. I understand the situation. I really do. I have my own valid reasons for seeking out communication with this AP, and those reasons are irrelevant to the two questions posed at the end of my post. If you feel you are able to answer the two questions, or if you have experience in speaking with an AP, I'd love to hear it. If not, please scroll by. Thank you. Update. Finding the truth through contact with AP? I recently discovered an affair that my girlfriend had years ago. There may be another AP, and I want to contact him and ask him about his relationship with her. I have his number and I know who he is. He knows who I am as well. Has anyone here successfully talked with an AP to find the whole truth of the situation? Any advice for a first-timer trying to get to the bottom of a possible affair by communicating with the AP? Redditor's reactions last update after. Redditor 1. Assuming that their relationship is over, I've generally found the AP to be more truthful as they no longer have any reason to lie or anything to hide. Your partner would typically have more reason to lie due to self-preservation. But Redditor 2, I found out who my WP's AP was fairly easily and reached out to her. He lied to her about being single without children, had her convinced he was in love with her. She had no idea I or our twins existed. She was nervous to talk to me at first, but when I told her I just needed answers to figure out what to do for myself and my family, she opened up. I was kind and I wrote down all of the questions I wanted to ask. However, Every time we spoke, although gentle enough, it was still traumatizing. So, I highly suggest bracing yourself for insurmountable pain. More questions will come once you start talking, so be prepared for that as well. But writing down what they say could help. I took notes and compared it to timelines and realized how everything was working. It actually helped me to feel a sense of validation because I discovered my intuition was spot on almost every time. Talking to her also helped me poke holes in the Beal shit he was trying to rely on when he was afraid to tell me the full truth. Redditor 3, my wife's AP, years out, still prefers to lie to me. He thought he still had a chance with my wife, I guess. I pretended to be her, and since he tried to verify it was her by asking questions only she knew the answer to, I just worked those questions into our discussions, got the answers, and got his confidence. He is APS of a person. He's now married to the girl he started seeing right after my wife, and while married, is telling my wife actually me that he misses his BFF and that he loves her. What a pathetic waste of a person he is. He started his current marriage off while cheating with my wife for the first 1.75 years of their relationship. He met my wife about three months prior to the start of his current relationship, and when he met my wife, he was dating a girl that had a child that he supposedly loved and actually lived with for two years. His moral compass is non-existent, and when I reached out to him months later as myself, not my wife, he still spewed lies in an attempt to manipulate. All I'm saying is, the AP may have no reason to lie anymore, but if they are a piece of poop, they are a piece of poop. They don't care about anyone other than themselves. APs that are aware of the existing relationship are narcissistic as shoals that would serve the world better by taking their own lives. F them. Redditor follow up. Do you realize that who opened the door was your wife, isn't it? The PS of AP could have tried and tried, getting nowhere if your wife were loyal. Just saying. Loyalty can't be learned. Last update. I so badly want to reconcile. I have so much to lose. The life that we've built together, the job that I have, 
the dogs that we care for, but I can't get over so many obvious instances of cheating, of infidelity. What do you do when you know there is more, but that won't be admitted to? I know there is more than one, but I only have proof of one. I feel like I have to shove it in her face, the proof that I find through my own due diligence. Why can't she just tell me the truth through the guilt that she feels from what she did? Why does it have to be guilt by proxy of me finding out and then her acknowledging? What kind of guilt is this, and does it lead to any kind of reconciliation? I'm starting to believe that it leads to nothing. I'm beginning to believe that I have to leave. Redditor's reactions. Redditor 1. She's trying to control the outcome, preserve her image, and avoid the consequences. How do you know there is more? Op answer. For the affair I found proof of. Me finding out was a simple mistake on her part, otherwise I would have never known. Never. She covers her tracks well, but not well enough to remove all doubt, so I know there are more. There are instances that stuck out to me, now that I have this new perspective, knowing that she is capable of cheating on me and lying to me. I believe most of her affairs have been casual hookups, no EAs. There's a co-worker that I'm 99% sure she was having a fling affair with. I happened to glance over and see her frequent contacts as she was sharing a Reddit post with me, and here is this co-worker on Snapchat. I had no idea she even had Snapchat. Before I saw that, she mentioned him often, describing him as cocky, and this guy is sure enough, her type. She loves military, cocky, conservative, and strangely enough I am none of those things. She had withdrawn from me and become cold during this time. She even mentioned us taking a break. She quickly deleted Snapchat and all of the contents when I saw this, and to this day she continues to delete any text message he ever sends. They keep contact to a minimum and I think she has since lost interest in him after he left the job for a few months. But the period of time in which they were most connected, she was displaying a lot of contempt and disrespect for me in addition to being distant. She would often return home from work later than usual, and even went on a girl's trip to an area in driving distance from where AP was deployed. The morning she left for that trip, AP texted how's it going? Upon her return from the trip, that message and all of her others with him had been deleted. At Redditor 2, it's no coincidence that all the information regarding her betrayal is information that I discovered on my own. All of the questioning in the world yielded nothing substantial and nothing was ever admitted to or disclosed yet she claims that I somehow know everything there is to know about what went on. The chances of that being true has to be close to zero, which is more than enough evidence to support my belief of her withholding damaging information. Redditor follow up. I am in the same boat. Everything that WP has confessed to are things I either had to find for myself or others verified via text and video. So, when he claims that you know everything, I immediately call him out. I don't know everything. Far from it. What I do know... He was not forthcoming about until after I had evidence. If you ever find a way to get your wayward to come clean, I'm up for that knowledge. I even tried explaining that I didn't want him to wallow in shame. I just want to be able to move on. Not face new discoveries every few weeks. That makes it that much more difficult to get past it. WP just doesn't get it. Potentially because they are fully aware of what they're hiding and do not want to deal with the consequences. Another Redditor follow-up. It's cowardice. Plain and simple. Op answer. It is cowardice, and it's also frighteningly careless. Like it doesn't bother them in the slightest that we are living a lie at our own expense, for what they did. Then they sleep just fine while gaslighting us into thinking we are crazy and controlling. I was following another Redditor in this group whose wife went on a business trip, hooked up with a guy multiple times, and felt so much guilt about it that she came home and admitted everything, every detail. His story was heart-wrenching, but the courage of his wife to own what she did, and to not admit the truth, it's something that I need to be able to reconcile. Otherwise, I will always be wondering about every instance that was similar to the one in which I found proof of. Redditor 3. In my case, WW claims she was efforts to have multiple long, expensive Italian lunches and drive her car to a hotel. She then checked in, under her real name, then AP, her boss, would call her to get room. All because my WW told AP I lost my job and he took advantage of our financial situation. Three years and four incompetent mix later and still no full disclosure. I know until she fully discloses we cannot really heal. It's F. Kid up. The philosopher Dante said the ninth and worst level of hell is the level of betrayal. He was correct. Your entire life map gets flipped upside down. You have no idea what is good and bad. Complete mental, physical, and spiritual disorientation.
who is good and bad. This will raise its evil head. It will attack you with unrelenting doubt, depression, triggers of every type and more. Who can you trust if not the most intimate relationship in this world? This evil charade will destroy what little you have left. Have you gotten betrayed in the past because of your incorrect map of the world? Probably. If your WS is not completely transparent and you've tried counseling multiple times, you really have no choice. You may must choose to end what was never real. You're leaving nothing, therefore you must leave. This has been my revelation. I hope you have your own revelation. We must each have our own unique personal revelation. I'm so sorry. Oh, 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 oh.